Since the year is still fresh, I figure now is a good time to talk about some of the biggest investments coming to South LA now. With that, let's see what's happening in 2022 and onward. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the South LA Recap. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to learn more about South LA on the regular. So let's jump into this new investment opportunity roundup that will include museums, transportation, and housing. Like many of you, I've been waiting for the new Crenshaw line, now renamed the K-Line, to open in late 2019, but the COVID-19 pandemic happened and Metro wasn't quite ready either. Anyway, at the end of this past January, LA Metro held a virtual meeting on the progress of the K-Line, reporting the light rail is about 99.5% complete. The board also shared that this K-Line will open up in phases, with the first starting in the summer of 2022. Starting this summer, the line will operate seven stops between the Expo Line and the Westchester Veterans Station near LAX. Metro says its phase opening is in response to the automated people mover construction that's happening now near the airport. There's no word on when the final portion of the K-Line will open, but Street Block LA forecasted a November 22 completion date earlier last year, which will likely hold true. When it is fully operational, the K-Line will extend to Aviation and Sentry at LAX. Speaking of light rails, Metro just announced approval for a new $8.5 billion light rail that will run through several Southeast Los Angeles County cities, including Cerritos, Southgate, and Huntington Park. The full route is still being studied by the LA Metro board, but regardless of the fact, it's really neat to know that LA is getting another light rail and a lot of it is gonna be running through South LA. Slauson Avenue has an exciting update planned and it's honestly not coming along fast enough. Last year, I published a video on the State of the Rail to River Active Transportation Corridor project that seemed to pause in mid-2021. The project is divided into two segments. Segment A is between Long Beach Avenue and Crenshaw Boulevard, and Segment B will extend the trail from Long Beach Avenue to the Los Angeles River. After the project broke ground in early 2021, no new construction has happened on segment A or B. However, last September, the Los Angeles Metro Board found discrepancies between other projects happening near the segment B of the Rail to River Corridor. So it paused the project entirely in the meantime and promised it would come back with a new alternative for the segment B in early 2022. So there you have it. There hasn't been any movement yet, but I'm sure we'll learn more about this project once segment B has been finalized by the board. If you've been near Exposition Park, you've probably seen the build out of the towering Lucas Museum of Narrative Arts. The Los Angeles Times reported that George Lucas's $1 billion museum broke ground in March of 2018, but in mid 2021, the museum pushed its opening date back to 2023. Lucas's museum will feature a set of two theaters and 80,000 square feet of gallery space that will include over 100,000 objects on display. Sandra Jackson Dumont, the director of the upcoming Lucas Museum, said that this museum will not just be dedicated to film, which Lucas is known for, but instead it will be dedicated to all forms of narrative art, including sculptures, paintings, newspapers, magazines, and so much more. New trains, the Rail to River project, and a giant museum all happening in South LA. These are probably some of the biggest investments that we'll see this year, but there are a few honorable mentions that you should be aware of. For starters, Magic Johnson Park just finished phase 1B of its improvement plan this past January, which includes an extended fitness walking trail, an off-leash dog park, and an informal natural amphitheater. I've yet to make my way back out to the park, but look out for an update from me soon on this. Other new developments include the Kaiser Permanente Watts Pavilion, which is a planned 60,000 square foot three-story building that will include medical offices and an expansion of the current Watts Counseling and Learning Center and Preschool. While this investment has already broken ground, the new Watts Center is not expected to open until 2023. Beyond parks and medical services, there's a slew of new supportive housing developments, most notably in the Florence Firestone, Broadway Manchester, Chesterfield Square, and Willowbrook neighborhoods, among so many other areas in South LA. 
Housing developments like these are popping up all across South LA and politicians firmly believe that this is a step forward in our answer to LA's rising housing issue. However, a lot of these developments are disproportionately planned for South LA. So I'm curious about what you guys think about these developments. Leave your notes in the comment section below. Long story short, South LA has a bunch of new developments planned for 2022 and onward. With that, let me know which one is your favorite in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys around on the recap.